Hey, welcome everyone to another edition of Ed Talks, another fascinating guest and friend of mine, Olga Kagan. Olga, welcome to Ed Talks. Thanks for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Now, tell us right off the bat, where are you from? And that accent is like a combination of New York, but something else. So t give us a little background. All right, so um, I was born and raised in a uh, former USSR in the Republic known as Uzbekistan in Tashkent City there. And now it's its own country, Uzbekistan. And so I visited there last year. It's pretty amazing, a beautiful place. And um, that's where I actually got my first nursing degree before moving to the United States in 1996. Very cool. But yeah, there's definitely a New York. I think New York has infiltrated your accent, your accent a bit. So you do a lot of different things and I want to jump into it a little bit. You know, you're a professor, a consultant, you're in informatics, you're in nutrition, a lot of different things. But I think your overall theme, if I got it correct, is sort of your, your life passion might be around transforming healthcare through innovation, education, and compassionate leadership. Did I get that right? Yes. Spot on. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I actually, it's interesting because when I was younger, I always wanted to be a teacher. Like my mother was a special ed teacher, but, um, you know, ever since I was about you know 13 or so, people relied on me on all kinds of medical necessities, like giving insulin to my grandmother every morning or giving antibiotic injections. Because back in the day when I was growing up, we grew up in the socialized medicine. And so there's lots of um, barriers in terms of access to medications, equipment, supplies. I mean, we had brilliant clinicians, um, but the access to actual material things like universal precautions and et cetera, that was challenging. And so a lot of times you would rely on your family members and friends to help you uh, with continuity of care at home. And so I was that kind of person and it's kind of led me in a pathway to healthcare and nursing. Ultimately, I ended up in education. So uh, now I end up you know, teaching and as nurses, we are natural educators and advocates, patient advocates. So it's sort of all of those passions collided now that I get to do what I, I always set out to do without even knowing back then that I would end up here today. Yeah, no, it's so cool. And we 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 sort of met online, right? I would see all your content on LinkedIn and you put out, you're just a fascinating individual, put out great information. And I know when I was at a pinch, so I just want to thank you publicly. I was putting together with uh, my co-editors, Sakshika from Humana and then a couple of docs out of Cleveland Clinic. We were finalizing our AI book and I realized, and married to a nurse, I realized while we had great clinician physician input into the book, man, we were missing nursing. And I was like texting you or messaging you like, help me. And uh, we were approaching deadline. I think it was that same weekend that I reached out to you and you and your fabulous colleagues had already been working on a really important work, which I'd love for you to talk about. And it really helped out. And so in the book, which is released at HIMSS 25, uh, you know, there's work from, from you and your colleagues. So thank you so much for, for that help. But yeah, talk about that. Cause it's about the five rights, right? Around AI, but nursing perspective. Yes. So it's actually very interesting. And thank you for inviting me again. I really am very grateful that you incorporated nurses voice. And I try to make it a point everywhere I go, I try to really bring nurses, the nursing voice into uh, non-typically nursing spaces. And I think HIMSS is one of those, and we actually were able to be very successful in building a very large nursing presence, even within New York State chapter where I'm most active. And so having the that network and the ability to work with all those fabulous nurses and leaders in informatics, we were able to have a group of nurse informaticists to work on very important projects that will help propel technology, healthcare technology within the nursing circles. Because as, as you know, change is not easy and implementing new technologies is also comes with plus and minuses. So we want to make sure that we provide nurses with very practical, usable tools that they can rely on to ease the adoption of that new technology. And so one of those things was five rights of AI, which was marked after the five rights of medication administration which nurses are very familiar with. And so that familiarity piece hopefully will translate into the five rights of AI. So they can really understand, okay, this if I'm given the AI power tools, what should I be looking for? And those five rights sort of outline some of those major components that that should be um, paying attention to. Yeah, I, I love it. It was great because I got to read it. And 
it's fabulous. And so it really makes the book that much better. And it is, as you pointed out, you know, super, super critical. We have the nurse perspective in everything we do. I think nurses is where the healthcare rubber meets the road, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's all about the nurse. But you, you go, you're very multifaceted. I never really had anyone talk about sort of this nutrition piece. So tell us sort of what you're doing about, about that aspect. So I'm not a nutritionist, and I, but what I am passionate about is research in the space of allergy and, and especially food allergies, because that's an, you know, um, something that has become a real problem in the United States, actually globally, really. So 33 million Americans live with food allergies, and it's not limited to just children. You know, one in 13 children have food allergies. And of course, we're now seeing more adults and adult onset food allergy. And while there's lots of theories why this might be happening, you know, and there's really no cure yet, but we still have to be very diligent because, you know, we don't want those individuals. And, you know, we eat every single day, three times a day. So we don't want those individuals suffering allergic reactions. And of course, the cost of health care is skyrocketing. So, you know, if you have a reaction and not treated properly, you end up in the ER, that leads to additional testing, additional treatment. So it's just, you know, if we look at it more holistically, you know, it's about the person, but it's also that everything has to do with that person when this person shops, eats, and becomes consumer of healthcare. So we want to make sure the medications are affordable and we do some advocacy work. And in 2019, I started um, a food allergy nurses interest group, utilizing, you know, leveraging my informatics skills of conducting business virtually, you know, and um, this group has grown since we're close to 100 people. We're now incorporating as an association, Food Allergy, Nurses, uh, Food Allergy Nursing Association, which would be a global effort because we do have members outside of the United States uh, at speaking to that global uh, problem. And we do hope to bring people together and hopefully have a more allergy-informed nursing workforce in general and developing specialty roles to help bridge some of those new models of care where nurses can use telemedicine and can use all those technologies to help bridge the gaps in areas that we are seeing right now, especially in underserved, underprivileged populations across the United States and globally. And specialty care may not be as accessible in those areas like allergists and immunologists and be that extension of the physicians and specialists in order to deliver quality, affordable care to all segments of our population. Yeah, super important. That's why I wanted to call it out because it's sometimes something we ignore a bit, but is part of the whole person care and can lead, right, it, it, it is a, it can lead to poor health outcomes or it can lead to great health. So it's really critical. But you also wear another hat, Do your doctor, professor, also Kagan, Dr. Kagan, and what sort of things do you do you teach? Well, I teach in two New York based universities and I teach in their graduate informatics track. So I teach informatics nurse and uh, I love it because, you know, it's my passion as well. You know, I grew up without technology. So for me, when I moved to the United States and I saw the opportunities, I bought my first computer, I, but I, I had to be self-taught because I never had the time or ability to take computer classes in nursing track or uh, interact with computers unless I bought it and self-taught in my undergraduate years. But since um, it's interesting because after 9-11, there was a program set out um, it's called World Trade Center Medical uh, Monitoring and Screening Program at Mount Sinai. And we got a, a new grant to set up that program. And part of this was collecting data. So because we wanted to monitor and, uh, you know, uh, follow those individuals longitudinally so we could see if they're developing any health problems down the road after all the exposures that they've been exposed at ground zero. And of course, the amounts of data that we collected was enormous. And doing it by hand was like almost impossible. I said, you know, there has to be a better way. And we actually did implement electronic me um, medical record at the time that helped with data entry and data collection and data analysis. And that kind of sparked my interest in informatics, believe it or not. But I always been very attracted to technology, even before that job. You know, I worked um, in critical care setting with lots of different machi machines and equipment. So I've always had the snack for, I guess, informatics and technology. So I wanted to, it was like a natural, I guess, path for me to then pursue informatics and now be in that space. That's cool. 
And my final question for you, Olga, is obviously you're a very accomplished uh, nurse and executive and researcher. What advice would you have for someone new into nursing? So this could go, this could, I won't limit you on what you might say. It doesn't have to be informatics or anything like that. But what would advice be that you would give to someone just entering into nursing? Well, um, given the problems we're facing currently, so my advice would be we see a lot of burnout. You know, we see a lot of nurses living bedside and we don't really have a nurse shortage per se because the numbers are there. It's just we don't have enough nurses willing to work under the current condition. And so my advice to nurses would be don't always rule out and leave the profession altogether. There are so many opportunities within a profession that if you're burning out, there are other areas or avenues you can pursue nursing. For example, uh, I'm, I'm on the board of the organization called Sancia, which is a society of nurse innovators, scientists, innovators, entrepreneurs, and leaders. And that's where we are kind of, and it's a very special group of nurses, really, because they're very innovative. They think outside the box. They're always a few years ahead. You know, it's unbelievable some of the stuff that they're doing, you know, and what we say, you know, yes, there's entrepreneurship, but we also very much encourage entrepreneurship where nurses can innovate within their own health systems. So if they're not happy with what they have or what they see, you know, there is a way to change things or find a place that is transformative, that supports nurses in pursuing their passions and aspirations. And so I always tell them, you know, surround yourself with people who have that, you know, those role models, find them and get mentored by them. You know, use your network, use your um, resources wisely so you don't have to leave the profession and still be productive and be satisfied with what you do without burning out. Yeah, oh, that's sage. Sorry, it was a month. No, no, that's really good advice. Yeah, there's so much. Nurse, that's a beautiful thing about nursing. So many different directions you can go. And yeah, maybe try bedside and after a while you do something else and you never, you never know, you might come back. My wife did that. She was bedside and she went on a tech uh, journey and she came back to bedside. And now she's doing, you know, just running her own clinical practice. So there's so many opportunities. Olga, you're a fascinating person. Thank you so much. I will put all the information about you in the show notes so people can reach out to you uh, and learn even more. But thank you for being part of Ed Talks. Well, thank you for having me. I do appreciate it. Okay, that wraps up another episode of Ed Talks. Thanks for being with us.